Tonight, I'll be taking a second shot at a galaxy that I photographed last summer, but I'll be using a new telescope design that I've never used before on deep space objects. It's making me feel a little uneasy, but coming from a science and engineering background, I love a good experiment. And be sure to stick around till the end of the video to see the final result. So come along for another astrophotography imaging session as I revisit Messier 63, also known as the Sunflower Galaxy. My name is Kwesi Akwa, and welcome to the Astro Park. Messier 63, or the Sunflower Galaxy, is a spiral galaxy located in the constellation of Canis Venoctici at a distance of 29 million light years away from Earth. It was discovered first by Pierre Méchon and verified by Charles Messier on June 14, 1779. There's a general lack of spiral structure when the galaxy is viewed in visible light, so it has often been referred to as a flocculent galaxy. However, when viewed in infrared light, a two-arm structure can be seen. M63 contains 400 billion stars and has a theorized supermassive black hole at its center with a mass of 850 million solar masses. So here's a rundown of the equipment I'll be using for tonight's imaging session. For the first time on deep space objects, I'll be using the Celestron Edge HD 9.25 Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. And for imaging, I'll be using my first one-shot color CMOS camera the ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro. And as usual, this will all be on top of the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG mount. And to keep light pollution at a minimum, I'll be using the Optolong L Pro broadband light pollution filter. So, without further ado, let's head outside take a walk in the park, and get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of the Sunflower Galaxy. Hey everybody, so I just completed my polar alignment and star alignment procedures. So I'm getting ready to slew over to the Sunflower Galaxy to start imaging. But first I wanna talk about the imaging train that I'm using for deep space photography on the Edge HD telescope. So first off I have my 0.7 times reducer flattener, followed by this device called a T adapter. Then I have my filter drawer, a 21 millimeter spacer, and then my camera, the ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro. So all this together adds up to 146 millimeters of back focus, which is required for this telescope. So I wanna give a shout out to Cody over at Astro Blender. He has a video series called Back Focus 101, and that talks about how to figure out the back focus for Celestron telescopes. So that was definitely a big help. So Cody, if you're watching this, thank you for your assistance on this. 
I'm also going to be using an external guide scope with this system as well. This is my largest one, the William Optics 50 millimeter aperture guide scope. I also use this with my refractors as well. And unfortunately, I don't think it might not be adequate enough to guide this large telescope at 1645 millimeters with the reducer installed but it's the only guide scope that I have so I'm just going to work with what I've got so in the future I might look into trying to purchase an off-axis guider for this system for better guiding accuracy and also tonight I'm working with a 70 percent illuminated waxing gibbous moon but it should be on the other side of the sky so hopefully it shouldn't give me too much trouble but unfortunately i will be going against good practices for deep space photography because you don't want the moon to be visible in the sky but unfortunately recently in maryland the clear skies have been few and far in between so i just have to take what i can get so if you're ready to go i am too so let's slew over to the Sunflower Galaxy, fire up Astrophotography Tool, and let's get this party started. Okay, everybody, I'm inside of APT, and I've started my first round of exposures on the Sunflower Galaxy. So if you follow the red cursor right here, you can see the bright core of M63 right in the middle. And this is definitely a game changer from what I did last spring, as with this telescope, using the 1645 millimeter focal length, with the focal reducer installed, it brings you nice and close up to the galaxy. So I'm hoping with enough exposure time, I'll be able to pull out more structure inside of the galaxy than what I did last spring. So let's take a quick look at the guiding real quick, just to see the progress here. So a couple of wobbles here and there, but the uh, total RMS looks like it's around 0.82 arc seconds per pixel, which is what I'm expecting due to the focal length and size of my camera sensor. So for better or for worse, the William Optics guide scope is doing the best that it can. So yeah, it looks like this experiment is going pretty well so far. So. As usual, I'll be taking as many exposures as I can tonight, and I'll just see how the night progresses. So stay tuned. Everybody. So just want to give you all a quick update. I just completed a couple hours worth of exposure time on the Sunflower Galaxy and I slewed over to a bright star near M109 to do a focus check. Then I came back to the Sunflower Galaxy to do another round of exposures. So I want to take a moment to talk about sampling rates. To get the best sampling rate possible, you want to use the best combination of telescope and camera sensor. You can use this formula right here to figure out the value for your combination based on your specifications. And that value should be somewhere between one and two arc seconds per pixel. If that value is greater than two, then you're considered to be under sampled. And if it's less than one, then you're considered to be oversampled. 
Now, from what I understand about this, when you're undersampled, it means that the pixels aren't collecting enough information to get the proper resolution. And as a result, your final image will have stars that might appear a little bit blocky. So to fix this in post-production, you can apply what's known as the drizzle algorithm to get back some of that resolution. And oversampling is the flip side, which means that the pixels are collecting too much information to get the right resolution. And as a result, your final image may appear to be on the softer side. So as a general rule of thumb, in order to get the best combination of telescope and camera sensor, if you're using a telescope with a short focal length, you want to have a camera that has smaller pixels. And if you're using a telescope that has a long focal length, you want to have a camera that has larger pixels to get the best sampling rate possible. Overall, I believe tonight's experimental session for the Edge HD went pretty well, in my opinion. I was able to capture three hours and some change of data on the Sunflower Galaxy, and the guiding from the William Optics 50mm guide scope also performed well. I'm really looking forward to processing this data to see how well this telescope performs on deep space objects. I did have the moon to contend with earlier this evening, but it was on the opposite end of the sky, so hopefully it didn't interfere too much. So all that's left for me to do is to shoot my calibration frames, then I'll go home and get ready for work in the morning. So thank you for watching Astro Park. Please enjoy the image of the sunflower galaxy at the end of this video. And as always, until next time, take care, and I wish you all clear skies.